Hello, it's Alan. We are drinking a Gyokuro from um, Sugimoto tea. Uh, it's the only Gyokuro they offer, so we'll see how good it is. Um, it, here's the leaf. It's um, still kind of crumbly, not a whole lot of whole leaves in there, so kind of on along the line of, I'd say, Den's uh, Gyokuro Kin, or even the Sui Mei, they were pretty similar in um, leaf size, um, although very different in the end result when you tasted it. But So there's some crumbles in there, there's some big leaves in there, so it's kind of a mixture. Um, so we'll see what that's like. Uh, we're going to do kind of my, what, my favorite way of... Um, of brewing it and we'll see if it can hold up. So we're gonna do the six ounces or sorry six grams of leaf to 12 grams. Oh wow. <laughs> it's gonna have 12 grams in here. So six grams of leaf to 100 milliliters. So in here is 12 grams because it's a 200 milliliter when I fill it up to there. And we'll see if it can hold up. If it doesn't we'll simply do it at uh, the vendor's recommendations next um, but we'll just see um, this way. So, alright. So the smell is just kind of standard, um, kind of a grassy, light smell. It was an intriguing sweetness to this one, so uh, I maybe I just didn't notice it in the others, um, but alright, so room temperature water. Kind of be gentle, we'll see how foamy their version is. And let's get the timer going at the same time. Okay. Ooh, I almost didn't have enough water. All right, and we'll be back in uh, about 13 minutes or so. And we're back, and we're approaching 13 and a half minutes. So let's get ready to drink. And the pot's definitely filling up. It's, it's fun watching it as it absorbs and grows. Doing its waking up, coming back to life. Alright, let's see what you're like. It's very pale. I want to say the other ones I've had are darker. I can smell it already, so there's good aroma, at least from this distance. All right, let's see the wet leaves. Ooh, intriguing. It's very sweet. Not like caramel, or, but brighter, almost like a light steam versus like a dark, heavy steam. They don't disclose how much of a steam it is, so this is just my impressions based on the aroma. It just smells sweet and light. Hmm, I'm intrigued. All right, let's get the water ready. Okay, it's pretty thick. I I can kind of make out the shapes of the the drip lines, um, drainage holes, um, a lot of particulates. Kind of standard expectations from what I've seen so far, um, as far as what crumbly um, Gyokuro's are. So let's. There is a thickness to it. There's bubbles, but it's not. Foamy, I would say. Um, we'll see how that changes. Get that in there. Seeing, it's, I've seen thicker, but it's still got a nice viscousness <laughs> to it. Um, so, all right. Cheers. It's 
definite. Hmm. It's different than the others, from what I'm remembering. It's brighter, like it's light. There's definitely a sweetness. There's almost like no stringency, so the flavor is bright, but it's not active. I'm not getting a whole lot of, um, my tongue doesn't feel like it's being tightened or anything. This is intriguing. In a good way, like, hmm. All right, well, let's see what a little bit of heat brings out. Um, so just as low as this can go, do 60 degrees Celsius. We're gonna do for 90 seconds. And I'll be as, pour as gently as I can just to minimize foaming. Let's see what happens. So this is uh, Sugimoto tea and it's their only one and it's just called Gyokuro. They don't have any other name with it. They didn't reveal any cultivar, so perhaps this is a blend. Um, so maybe that's why it's a unique experience for me because it's perhaps a blend of different ones. Um, but they don't disclose that either. They also don't say the year, so it could be a blend of years. It could be the same year, but it could be in 2018. It doesn't disclose that. Um, so I don't know the blend I do, uh, or the cultivar. I don't know the, um, the year. They do say it comes from Fukuoka Prefecture in Japan. Um, interesting thing about the location of that is it's on, it's a lot further south than uh, Shizuoka. And it's in the Sea of Japan side versus the Pacific side. So opposite sides of the island. Um, a lot further south where Shizuoka seems to be about the upper, th the upper lower third, almost to the half-ish part of Japan. Um, so we'll see what, it's a different, different location, different style. I'm noticing a pattern where the second steep, once I add heat, is actually greener. And so that seemed just a pattern I'm noticing. Also, all the crumbs are kind of clogging it, so it's hard for the liquor to come out. Mm. I, okay. Also, it's still very light, like a light steamed spinach. Um, not what I would say like a defrosted frozen. That one I would is a lot more intense. This is very light. Okay, let's see. Oh, let's get this going to 65 while we drink. Oh, and another cool thing. So I was looking in Facebook groups, and um, when I was drinking this Gyokuro Suime, I kind of lost track of count, and somebody pulled, there was a picture of somebody with a D20 dice, and that's how they keep track of the steeps. I'm like, that's absolutely perfect, because like, if you're drinking a Puar that can handle 20 plus steeps, I mean, this, this is a perfect way to count it. So, it's a D20, I'm gonna kind of rebrand it as a T20, but <laughs> little pun there. So we are gonna progress this to the second steep. It's still very thick, hard to see down through it. Um, let's see what the taste looks like. Like if you can see the difference in color, it's a little bit darker green, not as much of a difference as I've seen in some of the others, but it is darker green. Let's get them blended together. Still very thick, syrupy looking. That's promising. All right, cheers. Ooh. Hmm. 
it's hard to describe it because it's not astringent. I'm not getting a sticky mouthfeel at all yet. No. Um, I would almost say bitterness though. Like, like if you were eating steamed broccoli, perhaps. Hmm. This intrigues me. It's potentially my first not single cultivar. It could be a blend, but again, they don't disclose it. So I am gonna err on the side that if they aren't bragging about it, so they're not bragging about it being hand-picked or particular cultivar or a particular year, it's probably a blend of years, a blend of cultivars, a blend of, uh, and machine-picked, so it's a blend of stems and things even, um, only because they're not bragging about the process that this one undertook, so I can only speculate. But let's, uh, this is at 65, so we're gonna go for the third one and see how it holds up. We'll find out how many it can handle. What kind of notes come out in this one? A lot of bubbles in that one. I thought I was being gentle. Um, so it could be a feature of Gyokuro, as this is two or three I've had now that foam is a part of it. Um, as far as price point, this came out to uh, 22 cents a gram. So this is even cheaper than the Gyokuro Kin from Den's Tea. It's a few cents cheaper. Um, so 22 cents a gram, $6.24 an ounce. Um, so definitely if you're, uh, need, you're wanting Gyokuro but you can't afford the stuff that's a dollar plus a gram, um, this could be an option. We'll find out if the way how I approach it first, hitting it hard with um, six grams per 100 milliliters, if it's too intense, or if I'll cut back and we'll try it again with the vendors, um, uh, what they recommend. So we got about 10 more seconds or so. Definitely waterier, more watery, <laughs> thinner, I guess I could say. Although it definitely has that clogged filter effect. Mm. Still very light. I'd say as far as aroma, about the same intensity as the second steep. It's still there. Okay. Let's get the water going to the, uh, that's the third one. So we'll progress the T20 and increase this to 70. Assuming that this one tastes good enough to try another one. So the leaves can handle it. It's also still very green. A lot of chlorophyll still coming out. So that could be a good sign that I could do a couple more steeps or so, but we'll find out. All right, cheers. Hmm. very interesting. So there's just a subtle, subtle hint of fishiness. Not a lot. The only reason I'm picking up, I'd say, is because of I had experienced it with the Gyokuro Kin. Um, so I, so it's not too intense to really notice unless you're looking for it. And I kind of am because it's in that price point of the kin. 
but it's very, very light. If I'm not thinking about it, I'm not tasting it. It was just there in that first, that first mouthful. So it's not horrible. It, it just, it's a signal to me that it is definitely not the most primo, supreme, epic, hand-picked by whoever rolled on the thighs of <laughs> like cigars or something, some of those stories that come out. Um, so I can tell it's a Gyokuro, but I can also tell it's not the supremo supreme. I'm intrigued. We're, we're gonna go for a fourth. We'll see what happens. The bitterness seems to have mellowed out, so it was more intense in that second one. This third one was just all around very m mild. So, all right, so we're at 70 degrees. Get that going for another minute and a half. Lots of bubbles. Even as I'm gently pouring as gentle as I can. We'll progress this up to number four. We'll find out. We'll just embrace the silence. Or the garage door from my neighbors. My apartment sits atop all of the garages of everyone else, so I don't have anyone living above or below me, but everyone's cars are parked below me. Definitely got the pot is filled with the leaf. Ooh, it's getting hot. And a lot of bubbles just sitting on top there. Okay, so now it's dissipating a bit. I have to really inhale to get any aroma. This might be the last one, we'll find out. Hmm. But just in case, we'll heat the pot or the kettle up to 75, just in case. Still a lot of green in it. Also still very, um, while easier to see through, it's still cloudy, which tells me there's still a lot of flavor in it, but we'll find out. Cheers. Okay, I'm getting the astringency now. I can feel it on the sides of the tongue. Some of the bitterness is back. It's a very light astringency though. Very, very light. It's very mild, but a very good cup still. I think I can go one more. Let's do one more. So we're gonna go 75, we're gonna call it at this, but we're gonna go 75 degrees for another minute and a half. All right. And while that's going, um, so Sugimoto actually uh, provided some fun little samples. I just noticed that they're actually tea bags, um, but they've got three different samples in here. There's a Sencha, a Hojicha, and a Genmaicha. 
Now, I've had a hoji cha before. Um, I might talk about that in another video. Um, but that's, from my understanding, a roasted um, roasted tea. Um, Genmai cha I have for sure had before. That was at a restaurant, a, um, a uh, noodle uh, ramen place just a mile or so from my house. Um, and it, I'd never had it before. I'm like, ooh, let's try again my cha. And it was really good. It's got like this toasted rice in it that's pretty enjoyable. So I'll be curious to see what these are like. Um, I don't know if I'll leave it in the bag or if I'll do a movie or if I'll drink these. I just noticed they're tea bags instead of loose leaf. Um, but I'm still curious. It was also cool that they had a little letter in here. There's a picture on the back. And with a handwritten note, so that was kind of cool. Um, let's get this, while this comes out, I can read it. There we go. So they're like, handwritten by pen, Dear Alan, thank you for ordering our tea. We hope you enjoy your purchase. Have a wonderful tea time. Team Sugimoto. And I'm like, oh, that's so awesome that they were able to send me a personalized note like that and actually like write it and it was, like, that endears me to a vendor. That's pretty cool. Um, they also have just some typed stuff in here, so, while well, this is still trying to drain. So, Tea Master Sugimoto and Tea Farmer Fujito. In Japan, the tea industry consists of both tea growers and tea makers. Our teas are nearly all from farms local to us in the Kakigawa region of uh, southwestern Shizuoka. Interesting. So if the farm is from southwestern Shizuoka, I wonder where Fukuoka comes in, because they, from what I saw, weren't even close to each other. Um, so the farms are located on Verdant Mountain, Verdant, which I've learned means green. So Verdant Mountain slopes, a very important factor in producing high quality tea leaves. The steep terrain prevents the use of large machinery, so all leaves are tended to and harvested by hand tools. Oh, so at least according to this little thing, these are hand-picked. The, the page I bought the tea from didn't brag about it being hand-picked, so I guess I would trust that this is supposed to be a blanket statement for all of their teas, um, that they're hand-picked. So this allows farmers like Fujito-san to get right up close and personal with their tea plants. So I guess that does answer a part where it's potentially hand-picked versus mowed. Um, I've seen some videos where they've got like these mowers where they mow down the teas, uh, tea trees. Whoa. That one has a... Maybe it's because I let it just steam. It had a very cooked, overly steamed smell. So this is probably going to be the last one. So, all right. Let's try that. Get that all in there. And cheers. Yep, very bland. Uh, so that tells me that's kind of the end. Um, that's the, f the fifth one. Oh crap, I didn't turn it. <laughs> Still getting used to using my new tool, so I did. The cold brew, the 60, the 65, the 70, 75. So, okay. So five steeps. Just kind of watery, still there. Like light, 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 light flavor. But it's definitely where I'm gonna say I give up on the leaf. But we have the encore. So let's drink that and find out. Let it sing one more song. And see what the encore is like. All right. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm. I like it all mixed together. So this might be one where, because it wasn't too bad, I don't know if I need to do a second video on it, trying the vendor's um, parameters. 
I would say that go ahead and brew it Gung Fu style, but not necessarily, unless you're curious, drink every um, progression. Uh, this is very nice, all blended together. It's very, very good. Very, I would say, approachable. Um, nothing in your face about it. Almost no tannin, um, like astringency. It's like very, very light stickiness, almost non-existent. Mm, but that's that's tasty. So, all right. Well, there you go. So, um, I would say that it would be a good buy, uh, a good purchase, and um, potentially just brew it all together and it's very affordable um from what i've bought so far this is the lowest price of all of them so i'd say give it a go um don't take my word for it but uh have a good day